the number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with content at scale.ai. Wit Studio, one end to end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kenichi Suzuki. And my name is Ryo Ichikawa. Yep. Thank you for cho uh, choosing our session instead of John's session at Original One. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, okay. You yeah, you're done. Sure. Oh, I forgot to hold the clicker. <laughs> so, um, to make our roles clear, you're an SEO expert, and I'm more into UX, CRO field. So think about this Brighton SEO thing is an SEO conference. Kenichi, what am I even doing here? Oh, good question, Ryo. What do I think the, the, uh, the end, what do you think the main goal of SEO is ultimately? Getting high rankings in search? For sure, rankings matter, but they are not the end goal. SEO is really about increasing conversion and getting people uh, engaged with, with their site, or in plain terms, making more money. I see, so you need both good SEO and good UX to maximize success. Exactly. Having a site that ranks highly but has poor UX is pointless. We need to work together to create great user experiences that perform well in search. Sounds good? Yep, that makes total sense. UX, great UX is critical to increase conversion and user engagement. Well, then I think this session is going to be pretty interesting. You know, we have, uh, we, we've had a ton of success stories at our company from improving UX. After making some UX tweaks, we've seen conversion go up 1.6 times, click through rates increase 10 percentage point, and people reading through more content. UX improvements really pay off. I know, Rio, I know you worked on a bunch of those UX wins we had. What did you do to make them happen? Can you share some of your strategies with the crowd here? Absolutely. So here is one tip. I always rely on this one super helpful tool, heat maps. So heat maps helps you, uh, help, uh, heat maps visualize the user's behavior on, the, on your pages. By using heat maps, you'll be able to learn how your users are reacting and engaging on your pages. So heat maps helps you to optimize your web pages based on the actual user's behavior and go get more conversions and also satisfy your users. Nice. So I heard our heat map tool has three main features. Can you walk through what they are? Absolutely. So there are three main features on our heat map tool. First one, attention heat map, or we also call it read heat map sometimes. And the second one is scroll heat map. And the last one is click map. So the attention heat map visualizes which part, on, uh, which part or which section on the page the users are reading or engaging the most. So by using the attention heat map, you will be able to figure out what part or which part on your page that users are paying attention the most. And then next up, the scroll heat map. Scroll heat map visualizes how deep the uh, users have scrolled down the page. So by using this, you'll be able to figure out at which part on your page the users have left the page. And the last one, the click map, this is the, the simplest one. So the click heat map uh, shows you which part or what element on your page that users are clicking. So I use click heat map to figure out if the elements that I want the users to click the most are being clicked or not. Thanks, Rio. Now let's move on to our first case study. ABC Mart is a leading shoe retailer in Japan. They use heat maps to significantly increase their conversion rates. This is a product listing page for trekking shoes. On the left, you can see the page layout. It has a hero image, rankings of popular items, popular brands, such by price, and category, product category list presented top to bottom. The heat maps on the right 
showed where visitors looked the most. As a reminder, attention heat map, attention heat maps showed the indicates the areas that received most user attention. Rio, can you walk us through how your team analyzed the heat map data and used it to improve the this page? Sure thing. So let's take let's take a look at the, the heat map data for each section. So first up, the rankings of popular item, which is located just below the fold. So when you look at the attention heat map data, which is uh, displayed on the right side of the slide, you can see the attention data, the numbers going up, and also the colors getting redder at that section. So you can tell that the users are really paying attention for the rankings of popular items. So let's take a look, let's take a look at the next sections. So as you can see, popular brands, which, is, uh, which only the, the brand logos are displayed, and also search by price section. The attention, when you look at the attention heat map data, you can see that the number is going down, and also the color is getting cooler compared to the, the previous one. Not only that, when you, look, when you also take a look at the scroll heat map data, you can also tell that the exit is getting higher compared to like, other sections. So to sum up, the people are not paying that much attention to popular brands and search by price sections. So lastly, the category list, which is located at the very bottom of the page. Even though it's uh, located at the very bottom of the page, still it's captivating a lot of users' attention. The number is going up, the color is getting hotter. Thanks, Rio. Let me recap your key findings on one slide. Visitors showed substantial interest in the rankings of popular items. They also spent a lot of time engaging with the product category list, despite them being positioned at the bottom. However, popular brands and such by price were mostly ignored. So based on those heat map data we just explained, we formed two hypotheses. First, People who have browsed popular items maybe want to see more popular items. And after browsing them, they want to see items by categories rather than by brands or search by prices. And so based on those hypotheses, we made two actions. First, we placed a show more button right below the popular item section. And we also moved the category list, remember the one that's listed at the very bottom of the page but still captivating a lot of users' attention? We moved that section to higher up of the page so that more users can interact with that section. Let me illustrate the two key steps we took to improve the page. First, she added a more button below the popular item rankings. This gave users, uh, this allowed visitors to easily access more products. Second, she moved category, product category list above popular brands and search by price. This gave users quicker access to the categories they are most interested in. So what happened after you made those tweaks? Any good results? That's a good question. So the newly inserted CTA, click through uh, um, CTA button, show more button, get, managed to get a lot of clicks. And not only that, when we take a look at the scroll heat map data, more visitors have stayed until they reach the category list. And we also saw huge improvements on conversion rate, click-through rates, and conversion rates to the product detail pages. Sweet. Now I get why heat maps are so useful. I have another case study to share. So this one is a lingerie e-commerce site in Japan. After the changes we made, which I'm gonna explain after this, it made a huge uh, improvement on the click-through rates to the product detail pages. So let me begin by explaining the page layouts that my team optimized. So sorry to jump in real. No problems, what's up? I think you should, you should take the lead on presenting, presenting this laundry case study. As you know, women's undergarments fall a bit outside my wheelhouse. <laughs> But, but I'm looking forward to hearing your insights on how they improve the page through heat map analysis. Well, very true, you got a point. But I'm happy to take charge of this one, so just you can leave it on to me. Perfect, the floor is yours. Appreciate that. 
anytime. So uh, back to the point. I was talking about the page layout. So this page introduces the popular items by popular colors. Uh, just below the fold, the colors are listed as buttons. So if you click any of these buttons, then you will be scrolled down to the section, that color, uh, the section of that color. So imagine you uh, click pink buttons, then you will be scrolled down to the, the pink item section. But the problem was obvious when we took a look at the scroll heat map data of this page. So around 25% of the visitors have left the page even before they reach to the, the main content area, the, the section that lists a uh, lot, lot of items. So based on those data, we uh, made some guesses. Uh, we, some, we made some guesses. First one, repetitive text might cause the users to lose focus. And second one, maybe uh, the color picker buttons might have been not be able to recognize as a clickable element. And the last one, people want just to see the products that display on the here image rather than read the long text. So we also made three actions. First, we simply removed the repetitive text. And we also added the text-based call to action uh, to make it clear, to make it more clear that those uh, color picker buttons are actually clickable. And the last one, we moved the, the color picker button section a little bit higher up so that the vi viewers can view the products more quickly. The first one, that, about the text. So the text in the blue circles, all those three ones, are literally basically saying the same thing over and over. So, what we did here, we only kept, we removed the two of them when we kept the first one. And next up, we added the text space uh, CDA just above the color picker buttons that says, pick your favorite color to make it more obvious that those color buttons are actually clickable. And last thing, last thing we did, we condensed the white space so as much as possible, so that we can move up the, the color bigger button section a little bit higher up, and that makes the users to reach to the, the main content area more quickly. And guess what? Because of those changes, the click-through rate of the buttons doubled up. So recently, it was around 10%, but it managed to get to 24% uh, of CTR. And not only that, when we took a look at the scroll heat map data, the scroll rate went up by 15 point, uh, 50 points. And not only on the heat map data, we also saw a huge improvement on the click-through rates to the product detail pages. So initially, it was around 41, 42%, but we managed to uh, improve up to 51, 52%. All right, Thank, thanks for leading that entire presentation, Rio. The result your team achieved was truly remarkable. You enabled uh, by, through heat map analysis, uh, you enabled more visitors successfully find and select their desired products. Would you be able to the key steps you recommend uh, for the benefit of our audience? Sure, so I'm gonna explain about the steps for analyzing heat map, using heat maps. I always take uh, these four steps that I'm just gonna introduce when I use heat maps. So first thing first, please keep in your mind when you take a look at the scroll heat map, uh, when you keep, please keep in your mind to start auditing and optimizing the above the fold. Why? Because above the fold is like the face of the page. So above the fold is like the content that the users dis, uh, use to decide whether they'll keep reading the page or not. Imagine your above the fold is not cool and not appealing to the users, then they will just leave the page immediately and there will be a very small chances that you can get higher conversion and also satisfy your users. And this also leads to the second point. Again, use scroll heat map to identify if there is any huge number drop on your page. And if you find any huge number drop, simply just fix it. 
And after fixing those bad points on your page, uh, on your page, next up, use reheat map and try to look for the highly engaging section or high attention section. And if you find those sections, just leverage them. I always use mainly two ma uh, majors when I uh, optimize or leverage that high attention section. Uh, I always uh, add more content on the, in that high attention section or simply move that section up, uh, higher up on the page. And after you're going through uh, step one to step three, again, use read heat map and this time find a low attention section on your page. And this time you're going to optimize, you, you want to fix this low attention area, right? So there's also two tips that I always uh, use. Either I always um, just remove the whole content, the low attention section, or just remove it, or just shorten it. Thus far, we have shared two e-commerce case studies demonstrating how heat maps can substantially improve conversion rates and user engagement. However, I'd like to emphasize that heat maps can also be highly effective for optimized engagement for article pages, especially for lengthy articles. This page on my company's blog has uh, ranked number one for a highly competitive keyword, yet heat map reveals that only 20% of visitors read the article to completion. As you can see, Oops, this article is quite long. The issue was even more pronounced on another blog post where short, uh, heat maps showed just 2% of visitors reached the final paragraph. While we achieved high rankings, users did not engage with our content. This is nonsense. So quick poll for the room. Do you read articles word for word? No. Oh, okay, thank thanks. <laughs> the short answer is no, as most of you responded. As ChatGPT explains, people don't read, but they skim, scan, or even skip. How can we encourage readers to fully engage with our articles from start to finish? This is where heat maps can once again provide viable insights. Moving forward, Rio will share her expertise on leveraging heat maps to optimize engagement for articles. So as many of you answered that you guys don't read uh, the whole article word for word, heat map data also shows that. So this is the, the captured image of the attention heat map data for one article. As you can see, the numbers, go, numbers are going up and also the color is getting redder at the section where the visual content like images, graphs are inserted. But on the other hand, the number is going down and also the color is getting a little bit cooler at the section where the, something is ex being explained in like long ass text. So not only heat maps help you identify what kind of content on your page engages your, uh, the visitors the most, it also helps you identify what kind of the content on your page makes visitors disengaged. And here's the last example that I can show you today. So there's this one blog post uh, article on our blog that writes about landing page. When I took a look at the scroll heat map data for this page, I was so in shock. So half of the visitors have left the page before even they reached the main content area. Imagine you put a lot of effort on SEO and invest a lot of money on PPC, but half of them are not giving a shit. And in fact, 80% of them couldn't make it past the first paragraph. So Kenichi, you've been publishing and posting the daily articles about SEO for over 20 years, right? Could you share us some tip, pro tips on how do you keep uh, your visitors, your readers uh, engaged with your content? Sure thing, yep. I'm top SEO blogger in Japan, you know? <laughs> so first, include relevant images and charts that visually engage readers. As I pointed out, people hate reading. Visuals can uh, communicate more information than, 
can take us that long. Our brains can also process results faster than reading text. Second, use bullet points and numbered lists for easy scanning of key information. The eye can quickly and easily identify the individual points or items. Third, incorporate descriptive subheadings to orient readers. They help to make your writing more scannable. Fourth, incorporate, ah, sorry, <laughs> place engaged parts higher on the page so visitors can find their desired content quickly. Six, craft concise sentences that convey one main thought. Long sentences may hinder readers from comprehending the meaning. Lastly, expl uh, explain niche terms and avoid unnecessary jargon. Lingo and jargon are not unnecessarily problematic, but should be explained, especially for beginner readers. So back to the example, this page, uh, there's, uh, there was this uh, huge number drop at the, uh, above the fold on this page, but in fact, it was not only happening on this page, but it was happening on almost all the articles on our blog. So what I thought here is that maybe something on this page, on this article, is not the villain here, but in fact, something that has commonly appeared across the, the old articles might be the cause. And the thing that has commonly appeared is at the sidebar section, and especially the advertisement banner. Here's what I thought. So this advertisement banner might be distracting the users from the, the main content area, and even make it, it's even making uh, the users to feel like they're in the wrong page. So what I did here, just simply removed it. And guess what? After this change, the scroll rate went up like a skyrocket. Even at the very end of the article, about 20% of the users are now remaining. Through compelling evidence and expertise, we have demonstrated the immense power of heat maps to optimize UX, captivate users, and drive results. We hope you feel empowered to unlock the power of heat maps at your organization. So that's pretty much. Thank you. And for Stop. those of And for those of you who are interested in the heat map tool that I, we just introduced in, in our presentation, here's a link to it. Um, you can use it up, up to five URLs and 10,000 uh, monthly, uh, 10, monthly page views free forever. So if you have any questions or anything you want to ask about, please don't hesitate to come up to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools.